Good morning. Oh my gosh. Welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today we're doing another garden update. I believe this is number three for 2016. And it is June 12th. So <clears throat> here in northern Nevada, we um, garden later than other people and we have a shorter growing season. Hi girls. Hi girlies. One of them's still back there in the coop but you know um the dogs generally have kennel time every day and they don't obviously they don't mind you can tell um Ragnar probably would not be as quiet with them because he's still not sure why we have chickens other than to torture him but Sage and Strut they'd be fine Sage is but in there um so garden update so this raised bed, we have my rhubarb, and I fertilized it, and it is coming to life. Um, one of my subscribers, and thank you so much, I can't remember who it was, when I was mentioning the thin um, stalks, they said when it dies back in the winter, cover that with manure, and so it gets that slow-release fertilizer. That means that they're hungry. So I went ahead and fertilized it with an organic fertilizer and I'll show you what fertilizer I use it's over on my um, my little rack for gardening grapevine is doing good parsley and I pick this almost every single day I pick parsley so you can see our radishes are coming in nice and I believe that's the breakfast radish absolutely delicious love it and then down here yesterday I planted little finger length carrots in these three pots. There's another pot back there. And so we'll have carrots coming up in odd places, but it's easier to do it um, if you actually, you know, stick your finger in, down in the dirt and this is new organic um, potting mix. And then put a couple of seeds in each hole and then if you have to thin it, you, it's easier to thin. <clears throat> so. And you can see the beans are doing good. I got pole beans here, so they're doing really good. And up here, everything came up. Now these are bush beans, and I this is an experiment. So I'm, I probably got too many in there, but we're gonna see what happens. Um, if I have to, I'll just pull, you know, thin them out. I've got uh, Swiss chard doing fantastic, and beans and. Swiss chard, but I some of the seeds washed away, so I only had them all really over here. So I, I planted some more in there this morning, and then I just planted this, I have not watered it in yet, and that's uh, some more Swiss chard. And I did like the carrots, just give yourself a little hole, stick a couple seeds in there, and cover it up. And so instead of the broadcast method, which doesn't always work out, okay. Here we go, we have more beans over here. And those can trellis right up that wire. And if you, if you look, you can tell the grapevine is grabbing on and, and um, doing its thing. It's making itself at home here, which is great. I would love to have grapes up over this trellis. That's my ultimate goal, is to have decorative food. I haven't planted one flower this year. And look, who needs flowers when you have these beautiful flowers? And that's off my sage. And just in one week, now after I did my last video, I chopped that down to as close as I could get it. And that's how fast your chives will come back. So I'm going to have to use that in something uh, here today. I'm not sure what yet. but And the chickens get out on the grass. They love scratching over there in the... I'm sure there's lots of bugs in there and so they get to free range in you know for three or four hours in the morning and I still leave food in their coop and water you always have to have plenty of food and water in there and then um, I cleaned out and gave them fresh shavings yesterday for their little nesting box and where they lay their eggs okay <clears throat> green onions and they're doing fantastic. And these are the bunching green onions. There's some spots there that are a little sparse. 
and I've started some green onions from ends that I cut off and so I'm going to bring them out and put them in today and got my celery is still just hanging in there um, and I do see baby a couple little baby carrots I don't know if it'll show up on camera but there's one so we might get a few out of here um, as long as I get beans and celery I'm good tomatoes little cherry tomatoes Ooh, one's getting ripe right here I don't know if you can see it they're starting to turn this one is starting to turn yum oh and there's another one starting to turn just tight little clusters um, and then yay we have pole or bush beans and that one <laughs> this pepper plant cracks me up it's got one little tiny pepper and I'm, I'm not sure what kind of pepper it is so and uh, one strawberry plant there have a couple more strawberries I only total I have four plants now because of losing them over the winter well hi Chicky Poo hi Chickers hi Chick 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 hi hi Chicky oh when I come out to put them back in it's so fun to watch Shotzi Shotzi no mama you leave them be it's really fun to watch them because they uh <laughs> they come running okay and I did I fertilized this as well and so I do see some thicker stalks coming in Let's see if I can show you like this one here is thicker now so we've got some thicker I'm gonna today actually I'm going to um, I'm gonna make rhubarb jelly and so I will cut back and it doesn't matter how thick or thin so I'm gonna get this really thinned out about two-thirds of the way um, you can pick the plant without stressing it out too much and um, it's gonna look terrible for a couple of days and then it'll pop back and look beautiful again just like this so I'm gonna go ahead and pick that today um, got spindly little kale back there I wasn't as focused on kale this year I, I don't know why but um, the other tomato here and strawberries and beans and then this little pot I planted um, collard greens because you can plant things in pots uh, they don't always need that root system you do have to feed them though because there's not that the microorganisms and the little um, the worms and all that uh, in the ground like there is in the ground so um, and in this pot Swiss chard and all the girls are wondering what I'm doing because they hear me talking and in this pot I believe I planted a cucumber but I can't remember <laughs> I guess it'll be a surprise um, and you know I don't even mind if I'm if I don't always know what I've got so you know for those of you that have to know and have to label and have to have it perfect rows and all that uh, that's not me at all I get creative and add as I go <clears throat> this is a beautiful eggplant I picked these up at Costco and this is an early girl tomato so um, let's see I've got uh, oh I've got uh, two rows of beets now I planted earlier and they never came up of course the ones I spilled out of the package those all came up but I planted these on seed tape so if you're interested in finding out how to do seed tape let me know in the comment section it's pretty easy and it makes planting much easier when you're planting down on your hands and knees in a row um, and then tomatoes they're all doing fabulous I've got little baby tomato on that one. Oh, and here's here's my plant stand or you know my working station keep plant food here this pot down here I also did in Swiss chard I've got a water this is a cucumber it doesn't look that great and you see this is why I feel like it's not worth buying plants because I just got that it looked fabulous yesterday and now it doesn't look fabulous so whatever three dollars and then I, I planted carrots around that so hopefully that cucumber pops back if not I'll throw some seeds in there but this is the organic garden tone 
and it's great for herbs and vegetables. Um, it really boosts your plant, and it's very easy to put on, but let me tell you, the dogs love it. So, you, because it does smell a little bit, and um, they want to find out what's going on in that. <laughs> so, um, pole beans all along here, and let's see, there's a tomato on that one. I don't know if you can see it. Baby tomato, yeah. And peppers. Yep, quite a few. That's an ancho chili pepper over here. And it's got a nice one started. Um, jalapenos. I just am really happy with how everything's popping back or popping up. Look at that little cluster of tomatoes. Oh wonderful. And I have no idea what kind of plant it is. <laughs> Doesn't matter. When they turn red or yellow. I'll know they're ready and uh, zucchini and zucchini and then there's a yellow squash on the other side and boy those girls would like to get in there huh so let's take you out to the um, raspberry patch okay so here we go <clears throat> we have I mean there it's so thick it's amazing how thick this is. I'm just in awe <laughs> of how well this is doing. And this looks a lot like last year for its second year. So I'm really pleased with how this is coming along. And ultimately, I want three rows. And it is almost forming that for me. Um, so next year, I, I'm i sure I'm going to have to come out and dig up these suckers where they are where I don't want them and transplant if I can. And here they are. They're following me. Are you girls following me? <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I just love it. And we don't put any chemicals on our lawn. So everything we do here in the backyard is very organic. I mean, once in a while, I'll get a hold of a, and I said Roundup in my video before, but um, I, I actually can get a pretty good weed killer organic um, that works decent it's it's not great but as you can see we have weeds we need to drag the back here and get out, get out here in morning after a rain so all the berries are doing excellent and these are not well they're starting to get little buds here um, so these will be flowering the bees are starting to get pretty thick in the berries over there um, pollinating which makes the dogs crazy they'll spend all afternoon trying to catch bees and little squash plants doing okay and there's one over there and there's one down there too but he's struggling and ooh, little cucumbers wow okay we've got cucumbers and Tatsy don't chase that chicken and blackberries down here and they're taking off and look at the flowers and we've got little baby blackberries so we're gonna get a few blackberries which is fantastic I'd like to train this to kind of go upright a little bit but I don't even care um, they're thornless so they can meander wherever they want and there's one two I think there's three or four plants in here Let's see if I yeah, there's another one there. So, oh, here's one. Okay, so there's three right there, and I think there's one more down there, but I could be mistaken. It's full of raspberries. And they've come outside the fence, which I really, honestly, I don't care. This is area, it might as well produce food. And because it's right on the lawn, it, it gets plenty of water. So I'm kind of thinking I want to expand further along these rocks and along that way um, and make just a whole hedge of raspberries because as you can see they do really good and we had more than enough raspberries to eat last year make jams um, pie bread or muffins and I even had some and I just made that raspberry lemonade jam and so and the grandbabies just come and pick until they, their tummies hurt. I mean, they, it, it really produces very well. So if you're on the fence, 
and this is what I hear from people, well, they'll take over. We'll put them in an area that you don't mind that they take over that area. Like right here, I don't mind. And like I said, I'd like to expand it. Um, and now that I've got these plants established, you can pop those sucker roots out and put them in the ground. Give them a little root booster to get them started. And um, you can pop them in some nice soil. And this, we didn't amend this soil at all. So um, I think when I put them in the ground, I added a little bit of um, organic matter to get them started, but that's it. That's how easy it is. Grow your own food, guys. Hi, girlies. Where's your other partner in crime? Is she having, is she laying legs? Let's see. Let's go find her. Let's go find her. I put a, a partial bale of straw in here, and mainly because it keeps them busy. If you look, oh, they're chasing me down because I could possibly have something good. Now they got some lettuce that was getting ready to turn. Hi, Mama. Hi. And they'll get in those compost bins just like my dog and dig around in there and it turns that dirt over. I love it. So the straw is mainly to keep them busy and um, they can peck any seeds they might find. And it also uh, adds to the organic matter when I shovel this all out. Hi, there she is. Hi, Mommy. Did you give me an egg yet? Huh? Hi, little one. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, goodness. Oh, she says, there's an egg, but it doesn't belong to me. Whose egg is that? Oh, it is your egg. Okay. It's just really light brown. Okay. Is there another one under there? Hi. Fresh eggs. Can't get any fresher than that. This thing's still warm. <laughs> really warm. Is there another one under there? Hi. Hi, pretty. Let me see. I'm going to set that down. Is there any more under there? No. Oh, yes, there is. Well, two. Oh, that one's even warmer. Okay, that one's hers. Here she comes. <laughs> and so this is what I do in the, in the morning. All these little spots here of poo do go ahead and get that out of there and it keeps your shavings clean for much much longer and in fact today or no, actually tomorrow I'm gonna go get some more shavings and chicken food and you girls want some scratch you want some scratch don't you she's like okay there you go hi she says I'm like, can I be on YouTube I'd like to be on YouTube huh. and I store their feed in these two bins um, so it's out of the weather, and uh, there's, I usually have straw bales up there. That's their water heater for winter time, and here's their water. This holds three, what does it hold? I want to say it holds three gallons, <clears throat> and it automatically feeds. Um, and I've kind of, this feeder, I was putting the layer in there, but I had more mice and birds eating it than my chickens, so... I decided to stop feeding the neighbors. Oh, here, here comes Sissy Law. She says it's time for me to lay an egg. Oh, huh, pretty. That's polka dot. That's a polka dots. She's got little tiny, tiny black dots on her. And she lays the biggest eggs. Holy cow. Well, I know it. So I'm gonna close this for her. So she'll go ahead and get, in, get on in there. And see, they've all followed me back in. So it's not hard to free range your chickens as long as they're used to their area. You know, they always have food and water to go back to. And and this uh, this is covered. So we do have a cover on this. Um, so they, I mean, they get plenty of sunshine in here and, um, and airflow. Yes, I know it. And, uh, Shotzi? Shotzi, are you in there? What are you doing? Mommy, you can't have that. Ugh, gross. Poo. Ugh. Give me that. <laughs> Ew, okay. Alrighty then. Life on the little homestead. This, and you know what? This is an acre. We could produce more food if we really wanted to. I'm, uh... I'm gonna bring my coffee out here and 
have a cup of coffee, water, and uh, wash off my table. It's got dust and then it rained a little bit and now it looks terrible, so I gotta rinse that off. And there you go. It's gonna get so full and abundant here pretty quick. You'll look back and think, wow, it looks so spindly, but it won't be for long. And we've got, I think, 20, six or 25 or 26 tomato plants this year which is about a third or mm, yeah maybe um a third of what we usually have i usually overdo it and i'm trying to hope that we just have a really good crop without blight and all those other issues that sometimes happens and ruins your crop because i don't want to buy tomatoes i want to put my own up all right and there you go. So that's my garden update. If you want to see more of these updates and see how nice that looks, that's a good looking hedge right there. So guys, I hope this inspires you to go ahead and maybe get your own chickens. Um, managed well, they do very well. Uh, get some fruit trees planted. I've got two honey crisps and a, a grafted pear tree. They all have fruit, not much, but they do have fruit. So we will enjoy it. We've got rhubarb and tomatoes and radishes and herbs and beans and all these things that we'll be able to put up. Um, and you can do this in a really small space. Even a couple pots on a patio will work. So I encourage you to try to grow your own food and uh, enjoy what you've got in your backyard. And I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe or a gardening update or a puppy update or... Hmm, Maybe some canning. <laughs> Don't forget to check the links below. I'll leave a couple links. Maybe a link to uh, that organic uh, fertilizer. And um, go check those links out. And some seeds. The seed company that I use. Um, in fact, I'm going to order some of my fall seeds here pretty quick. And I just love Franchi seeds. I think that's how you pron pronounce them. They're from Italy and they're all GMO free. So I best get to watering. <laughs> and I'll be back. Bye.